Good morning. I'm Dr. Net, and I love to help people be healthy and have energy to do the amazing things that they love to do with the people they love to do it with. So this morning, we're going to talk about fat and carbs and clean versus dirty fuel. And I'm sorry, Instagram, I do not know how to turn this chart around so you can actually read it. So you're just going to have to bear with me here. But what we're talking about today is the difference between fat for fuel and carbohydrates for fuel. Now, the more I do research, the more I understand how the human body works, the more I do all of the things that I do, I'm really, really, really leaning towards um, not eating an 80% fat diet, especially not an 80% animal fat diet. I'm thinking you need to broaden your horizons and eat more vegetable-based fats like coconut oil and avocados and things like that. But also people, I, I see a lot of people that are doing a keto diet and they're not eating any vegetables at all. And um, vegetables are important. But let's talk about this. Now, when I talk about carbs, I'm talking about grains like white bread and rice, white rice and um instant oatmeal, things that have really not much nutritional value, things that have basically been prepackaged for your comfort that we eat. And we really, unfortunately, a lot of us, really our entire diet is made up of foods that come in a box. If you eat foods that come in a box, no shaming, but if you eat foods that come in a box and guess what? You find them a little bit addicting. Do you find that when you eat certain brand macaroni and cheese, that you want to eat the whole box. Like you don't just eat one serving, which is like what a quarter cup or a half a cup or something. You want to literally eat the whole box. That was me. Five years ago, I literally would eat an entire box of macaroni and cheese and that would be my dinner. That was all I ate for dinner. Now, looking back on that, that was really not a very good idea <laughs> because what was I doing? I was creating, um, I was, first of all, I was, making my insulin go up, which was increasing my level of insulin resistance, which was increasing the midsection. I was working really hard to stay in shape and um, I had to work really hard at it um, because I was doing things like that that would increase my insulin levels really high and then my body would store all of that excess calories that I had just eaten as fat because it has to do something with it. And your body cannot burn off all of those calories as carbohydrates that quickly unless you're doing something like massive exercise. So people that run marathons, the reason they're so skinny is they eat tons of carbs, but they run them off. Does that make sense? They literally burn off all of the carbs that they take in. Most of us don't have that sort of level of exercise. So if we eat... 5,000 calories as carbs in one sitting, which is really, really easy to do, or 2,000 or 2,500 or even 1,000. We only have about two hours to burn off that sugar, the carbohydrates, before our body starts to store them as fat because it can only put so much in the muscle. It can only put so much into the blood. The rest of it has to go somewhere else. Because insulin is caustic to your system, it causes inflammation. So your body wants to not use any more insulin than it absolutely has to, but it keeps bumping up the insulin and up the insulin and up the insulin because we just keep putting more sugar that the body has to deal with in there, which is where insulin resistance actually comes from. It's not that you were born that way. You literally force yourself to be insulin resistant because you just keep eating and eating and eating more things that raise your insulin. And the next thing you know, your body is like, I have no more, please just stop. But we don't actually get like this big, boom, stop. We don't get that. We just start to gain weight and we start to feel yucky and we start to slow down and we start to feel like, you know, things are maybe not going well with us. And guess what? As that all happens, um, our bodies do a really, really good job of staying in balance. They really do. And unfortunately, we don't get the message a lot of times until our bodies have been struggling for quite some time to try to keep it all together. And because we have constant access to food or 
dead food, which I like to call it dead food, food that comes in a box, then um, we have a tendency to not know how far down the slippery slope we have slid. Boy, say that five times. We don't know how far down the slippery slope we have slid until it's too late, until something breaks, right? So you go to the doctor and you get notification that your blood sugar is too high and maybe you're leaning towards type 2 diabetes or you're kind of heavy in the middle and you don't realize that you've been sliding down this slippery slope until all of a sudden something happens and boom, your body says, stop, take a break, something has to change. Unfortunately, when this does happen, we've not been well educated as a people on how to make those changes. And there's this fad diet and that fad diet and this extreme and that extreme. And if you want to listen to my video on extremes, listen to my video from yesterday. It's on my Facebook page under Ask Dr. Annette. But um, extremes are not the way to do it, although extremes might be necessary when something first gets diagnosed, right? So if you've been eating this carbohydrate diet, if you've been living this box life, then you've been using a dirty fuel, a dirty fuel that leaves behind trash that has to be cleaned up by your body, causes inflammation and requires tons of insulin to make it all happen. And then you're eating more than your body can possibly utilize. So guess what? It gets stored as fat. And like I said, you can only have about 2,000 calories worth of carbohydrates in your body circulating blood system available as fuel at one time. But look at this. If you're eating fat, a fat, a low carb diet, not necessarily a fat diet, but a low carb diet, and your body is using fat for fuel, you have 40,000 calories or more of readily available fat fuel if your body knows how to access it. But your body cannot access this if these are here. So your body can't use fat for fuel if there are carbs present because insulin stops your body from going after fat for fuel. If you're fat adapted or keto adapted or you're eating a, a higher fat, lower carb diet and you're in a state of ketosis and you eat anything that has a little bit of carbohydrates in it that causes your insulin to spike, it turns this off. It turns off your body's ability to use fat for fuel. Isn't that sad? So like a little banana or an apple or something that has natural sugar in it, even if it's healthy sugar, if you're in a keto state, ketosis, ketogenic, whatever you want to call it, if your body is utilizing ketones for fuel because your body is making ketones and you eat something that has carbohydrates in it, there goes your fat adapted state. You're no longer using fat for fuel which is one of the reasons why I love this. I love to drink my ketones because I always have ketones in my blood. But guess what I learned? You can actually gain weight while drinking ketones if you eat like crap. So it's not a license to eat like crap and not take care of yourself. But it is amazing to help have ketones in your blood all the time. So if you're worried about aging, if you're worried about inflammation, if you're worried about insulin resistance, if you're worried about better brain health, this place right here, this is not the place to live. This is bad. Bad for you. I know you can't see that. This marker is kind of poopy. It doesn't work. So, X out the carbs. No carbs. Eating processed foods eating things like white flour that's been bleached and processed is bad for you. Now, should you avoid all carbs? Absolutely not. High fiber, healthy carbs, quinoa, whole wheat, if it's actually not processed, is actually better for you than white processed flour, right? So it's all about making sure that you have balance in your life. And if you're trying to burn fat for fuel, if you want all the benefits of burning fat for fuel or having ketones, ketones in your blood, then what you want to do is make sure that you stay in that fat adapted state and keep those carbohydrates as low as you can because you're going to get energy, better energy, 
better focus, better fat loss, better fuel, you're going to have better appetite suppression, you're going to feel better, you're going to have longer term health, you're going to have anti-aging, anti-aging, and your brain's going to work better. There are so many benefits to having ketones floating around in your body that, I mean, the list is just immense. Google it. It's amazing. But what I'm saying is, if you eat those carbs, then you instantly end up with the ability to burn fat for fuel drops. So if you're one of those people that's following a lazy keto diet and you're eating a lot of fats or bad fats, if you're eating a lot of like animal proteins and, and like the fats that are grilled and all of that, like just you need to eat good animal fats, but you also need vegetable fats is what I'm trying to say. I'm not saying animal fats are bad because I love them. I love a good steak every day of the week. I just love steak. Um, but... What I'm saying is, if you're trying to be fat adapted and you are cheating, then you're cheating yourself. You're throwing yourself out of ketosis. You're stopping your body's ability to burn fat for fuel. And if you're doing that, you're, you're on a roller coaster. You're not keeping yourself healthy. You're not doing a good thing for your body. So the trick is, and make sure you go look at this image because it gives you exactly what the image is. I wish I could share it with you peeps on here, but I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to share a picture on here. I don't think I can. Um, but anyway, that's my take. So you can have 2,000 calories in your body as carbohydrates, or you can utilize the 40,000 calories of fat that's already there. All you have to do is help your body learn how to convert it to ketones, convert it to energy that you can use, but you have to keep those insulin levels low in order to stay there. So if you'd like more information on that, come follow me. At, on Facebook at Be Better, Dr. Annette Stevenson, or join my Keto Lifestyle group. It's a Keto Lifestyle with Dr. Annette, I think is what the name of it is. I don't know. But you can get the link to it on my Be Better page. Just come join me there. And um, I talk about stuff like this all the time, and I try to help people understand how to live a longer, more vitality-filled, vivacious life well into their ages by utilizing technology and new things that are coming around that are actually healthier for you that will help you be healthier long term and help you get the most out of life so thanks for watching thanks for being a part of my my broadcast and I know that I rant sometimes but it's because I'm so passionate about helping people so love you guys if nobody's told you today you're amazing you can do amazing things Believe in yourself and go out and do the things that make you feel good about yourself. Help another person. Help somebody when they're down. Do things for, for other people. It makes you feel amazing. So have a great day. Thanks for watching. Love you. Whoop.